Welcome to Question Mark, a safe place to ask dangerous questions. In today's episode of Question Mark, we are talking about a brand new worldview. Now, a worldview is the grid through which you understand reality, and every worldview has to answer these six questions. What's prime reality? What's external reality? What does it mean to be human? What's the problem with the world? What's the solution of the world? And what happens after death? And today, we tackle the worldview of... What is relativism. Relativism begins with the foundational idea that truth is determined by the individual. It's not so much that there is no truth, it's just that my truth is true for me and your truth is true for you. Nearly every American college student at least goes through a phase of time where they consider the possibility, the plausibility of relativism. What I believe is true for me and what you believe is true for you. Now this profoundly affects every question in our worldview system. When you ask what is the nature of prime reality, is it the cosmos? Is it something transcendent? Is it a god? They're like, hey, whatever I believe is true for me and whatever you believe is true for you. What is the nature of external reality, the physical world that we live in? Hey, whatever I think is true for me and whatever you think is true for you. What does it mean to be human? Oh, whatever you believe, man. What, what is the problem with this world? Well, whatever your truth is. What's the solution? Oh, that depends on you. What happens after you die? Well, it may be one thing for you and it may be something different for me, man. Depends on what you believe, that's what's gonna happen to you after you die. The idea of relativism is that truth, the locus of truth is inside the individual, not outside of the individual. So your beliefs become reality for you. Now, relativism is attractive for a couple of reasons. One is that reality conforms to your whims. Like, you can believe anything and it becomes your reality, it becomes your truth. So if you want to believe that God is a, you know, vegetarian bottle of shampoo, awesome! You can believe that that's what God is and you can worship in whatever way you want to. If you believe that sex should be freely distributed among many people, fine, that's your morality and that's what you can decide for you. If you think that your afterlife experience when you die is going to look a lot like the island of Fiji, fantastic. You can believe that and that becomes your truth. The other thing that's attractive about relativism for people is that when you believe uh, something is your truth and not objective truth, then you never have to have a conflict with somebody else. I mean, if they believe that something else is true, you can go, hey, that's cool. You've got your God and I've got my God. You've got your morality and I've got my morality. We don't have to fight about it. I'll let you alone. You leave me alone. And we can just all coexist because there really is no truth that's undergirding any of that. Why can't we just get along anyway? The problem with relativism is that reality just doesn't conform to your whims. I mean, you might say, on this domino, there are 14 dots. But there's a reality there that there's six dots that are on that domino, and it's not going to change according to what your whims are. You may think that you have the ability to teleport to Tuscaloosa to go watch an Alabama game. But the truth is, when you try to teleport to Tuscaloosa, you're not going to be able to do it. You may think that drinking a glass full of Gasoline would be wonderful for your system. But if you drink that glass full of gasoline, you're up for a rude awakening and a bad tummy ache. The truth is, reality does not conform to your whims. Just because you believe it doesn't make it so. And your external reality may come into deep conflict with your internal beliefs because you can't make things happen just by believing them. Every relativist lives with a tornado of internal conflict because they say that they believe truth is not real, it's not objective, but they live as though it is objective. Anytime you go outside and expect gravity to exist the same way that it did yesterday, you belie the fact that you actually do believe that truth is external and objective. Now, there are many relativists that are selective relativists out there. 
In other words, they say that I believe that scientific reality and the physical world is really real, but things like theology and philosophy are moldable according to the person. We can determine our own morals, we can determine our own gods without being bound by those. The challenge with this is that in that case, you believe that external reality is really real, but the more fundamental reality is malleable. When you're in that category, you have a hard time answering questions like, why do I trust the five senses? What do I believe is behind it all? Because if the foundation is malleable, then certainly that which is built on the foundation also is changeable but you believe that this is real while well, this is changeable according to the original person. But it gets even more difficult every time somebody makes an exclusive claim. For example, in Islam, the first pillar of Islam is that there is one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. That's a truth claim, but it's also an exclusive truth claim. So either Muhammad is right and everybody else is wrong, or Muhammad is wrong and maybe somebody else is right. But Muhammad can't be right if somebody else is right that denies that there is, in fact, one God. Logic simply won't make that happen. The same thing is true in any religion that makes an exclusive claim. For example, in Christianity, Jesus made the claim, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So either Jesus is right and everybody else is wrong, or Jesus is wrong and maybe somebody else is right, but you can't come to the conclusion that both Jesus and somebody else is right at the same time. Uh, exclusive claims cannot be relativized. They're either right or wrong and they can't be relative. Further, reality comes crashing in on you when you face your death. When you die, something is going to happen. Maybe you'll die and rot in the ground. Maybe you'll face judgment. Maybe though there will be an eternity that includes heaven and hell. But after death, you're going to find out. One of those will be true, others of those will be false. And it really doesn't matter what you decided on planet Earth you are going to believe, that reality will come crashing in. And if you're a wise person, you'll determine your life's decisions based on what's going to happen for all eternity, rather than simply believing that eternity is going to change according to your whims. Finally, relativism is the most arrogant of all of the worldviews. For anybody to believe that all of reality, particularly God, is going to change according to my whims, that God becomes what I believe God is, is an incredibly arrogant person. Maybe there's another worldview that's more humble, more livable, and more accurate. Keep on watching these videos, and maybe you'll discover one that's a good fit for you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like and subscribe below to see more things like it, or just go ahead and ring the bell and that will give you notifications every time another one of our videos comes up. If you'd like to see another video very similar to this, how about looking at this one right here?